Welcome to Bloomberg Television's Taking Stock. I'm Greg Miles, filling in for Pim Fox. Well, the talk this week in the oil patch is about BP's big oil find. When BP of London announced it made a giant oil discovery more than six miles beneath the surface of the Gulf of Mexico, well, it spurred a lot of talk about more exploration in the region and elsewhere. Now, our guest doesn't think it takes a big oil company to get the ball rolling. ATP Oil & Gas, a Houston-based gas and oil developer, has seen its shares rise more than 97 percent this year. The company committed its own $1 billion to its Gulf of Mexico project. You're here to talk about it. The company's CFO, Al Reese. Al, good to see you again. Hello, Greg. Good to be back on uh, Bloomberg. Let's talk about uh, BP first, okay, uh, that, huge, uh, sure. uh, that huge oil fine. Uh, uh, how does it change the dynamics in the Gulf and, uh, and the whole money spent on exploration? Basically what it does, it shows that there's a lot of money still to be spent in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. This particular find is very, the, the BP find is in the western Gulf of Mexico. Uh, our Telemark project is in the central to eastern Gulf. There's a lot of Gulf of Mexico in between. Uh, there's a project very close to us uh, by Anadarko and Shell that recently had a discovery. It's actually a block away from ours called the Vito Project. There's a lot of dollars that are going to be spent in the Gulf of Mexico in the next decade. Now, one thing strikes me now, you're, uh, you know, investing a billion dollars uh, on your Titan yes. drilling platform. It's your company, I think, with uh, revenues last year of only about, right, $600, $700 million. Uh, that's that is correct. That's huge exposure. Uh, uh, it sounds like, you know, credit was pretty loose, you know, in terms of uh, giving you guys a loan. I mean, th th talk about that. Well, we, we made a big investment back in 2003 and 2004 into our Gomez project. Uh, that was a project that was going to more than double uh, the production within the company. Uh, that project ended up having about 700 to 800 million dollars spent on it, and that's exactly what that project did. It went from having about 15 million barrels of proved reserves originally. It now has already produced 15 million barrels, had cash on cash payout in less than two and a half years, and we still have 41 million barrels uh, left of proven oh. probable reserves at that project. That's exactly what we're getting ready to do at Telemark. And now, you know, you guys are showing you're pretty smart. Your revenues have, I think, quadrupled in the past uh, few years. Are you an acquirer? Yes. Are you an acquirer or an acquiree, potentially, in this world of well, relatively lower oil prices off the, off the record high? Uh, I, I'm certainly not going to answer that question directly as to which side we're on. What I will say is that we are uh, an acquirer of properties. Uh, we've never acquired a company, never rule out uh, anything, never say never in this business. But I see us making, continuing to make acquisitions. The nice thing about BP and the others that have to drill down to 30 and 35,000 feet is they've got to go through a lot of sands. Our Telemark project uh, is at uh, the wells are at about uh, 17,000 feet. Uh, that's where we're going to be producing uh, over 40, as I said earlier, 40 to 41 million barrels of oil is what's in the proved and probable to, reserves to, to, there. To clarify, you estimate you can, you can make a profit at what dollars per barrel do you estimate? 25, 30, 35, or what? Probably in that. Mo most of these properties were acquired in the high 20s to low $40 uh, environment. Yes, costs have gone up as prices rise, but what we've also seen is that the doubling and tripling of the reserves at the project. Every deep water project we have ever had, Ladybug, Gomez, uh, Canyon Express, every one of those projects has hit cash on cash payout in relatively short periods of time and have had uh, increases in reserves of two, three, four times. Uh, can't say that with, about Telemark yet. Yeah. But we're just getting ready. Well, I tell you, I haven't got my calculator with me, but I figure it, but oil is sixty-eight dollars a barrel, you know, and you're uh, you're uh, profiting at that lower price. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back and talk to you, Al, if you don't mind, uh, talk about more of the outlook for the oil markets. There you have it, uh, Al Reese, CFO of ATP Oil and Gas. Don't you go away. Welcome back. Uh, this is Greg Miles at uh, Taking Stock. Uh, uh, I've been talking uh, with Al Reese, the CFO of uh, ATP uh, Oil and Gas, about the company's uh, uh, dramatic growth in the past few years, actually up fourfold. Also, their plans to build their uh, new, uh, uh, or their, their plans for their Titan uh, uh, distribution, excuse me, the uh, exploration facility on the Gulf of Mexico. Al, welcome back. Good to be back. I wanted to talk with you more about your growth. You've grown about fourfold in the past uh, uh, few years. Uh, yes. said to about $600, $700 million in annual revenue. How dramatic do you think you'll grow over the next five years? 
Over the next five years, I think you will see step changes in growth. Uh, we've done it from 2004 uh, to 2008. Uh, in 2006, we started the growth in 2004, and in 2006, we put on Gomez. We're getting ready to have that same type of impact again. Telemark should start its growth beginning the early part of 2010. By the middle of 2010, it should be in full production, whether it's the end of the second quarter, beginning of the third quarter, that kind of time frame. That production right there will more than double the company's pr current production level. And as we move into 2011, we should be able to continue that. As you move into 2012, you then get Cheviot, which is our next large-scale project. That's over in the North Sea. Uh, that will have another tendency. I don't want to say it's going to double or even triple production then, but it's that kind of. But how about this? Sounds like you're getting up to two, three billion in annual revenues. At that pace. Yes. We, uh, I'm not going to say we're going to pass a billion in revenue next year. That's probably an exaggeration. Uh, we could. Oil prices uh, get above $100. Okay. Yeah, we could get there. Let's talk about oil prices. You just uh, sure. struck something on my mind. They're around $68 a barrel right now. Yes. A lot of people talking about a pullback. What's your take on where oil prices are going? I think you could see a pullback, uh, and, but I think most of it is economy-related uh, between now and October, November. Uh, I'm a believer that uh, you could have some weakness between now and uh, the next 60 days or so. But as you move into the October, November, December time frame into January of next year, uh, I think you will begin to see the real impact of the cutback in the drilling. Drilling rigs are down as much as two-thirds. The shale plays are not producing uh, where they were projected to be producing. Yes, they've held some gas. Uh, that's one reason you have a weakness in gas price. But oil price continues to be up uh, significantly above the $30 or $40 range that we had. I'm not predicting 100 but I'm certainly predicting it staying in the 60 to 80 range. I mean, could, it, could it potentially could, could barrel, it go up to 100 well. Could it go up to 100 do you uh, think? Sure. Sure, I think it could go what to 100. I think the economics are there. I, one, I think you have to have a worldwide recovery for that. Also, the devaluation of the dollar, revaluation of the dollar will get it above 100. But the valuation of the dollar, while it's being hit by all the debt the, the country is putting on, the same thing is happening all over the world. So even though you may have an inflationary environment here, you may have a devaluation of the dollar here against some of the European countries, uh, you may actually have an increasing dollar. How about natural gas prices? You're a big uh, developer also of natural gas uh, properties. Where do they we, go in this scenario? Well, fortunately for us, and I'd like to say this was planned, it really was not planned uh, in the fact that most of our properties are oil-based. Uh, more than half of our revenues for over two years now have come out of oil. But natural gas, I think you're going to continue to see weakness there. The shale plays, they're relatively easy to drill. And uh, <laughs> my, my shale brothers would probably say, you think that's easy? Uh, yes, they're, they're easier to drill than in uh, 4,000 feet of water. But uh, there's a lot of gas that's on the shale, uh, in the shale place, and I think you're going to see it continue to be a negative price, negative pressure. With that said, I honestly believe the U.S. government will come in. Uh, they've already basically embraced, which I concur with, uh, the idea that natural gas is a green fuel. It is the cleanest burning fuel we have, and I think you will see Washington and states begin to have natural gas as a alternative fuel, and you'll start seeing buses. I'll, you'll start seeing large scale. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll we've got 30 seconds left. I want to. Do you think Exxon sure. Mobil's and Chevron's and other big oil companies' res, uh, replacement ratios will improve with more discoveries? Uh, as you know, they are, have been selling a lot more oil than they've been able to replace, sure. which means it's going to run out in 10 to 15 years. Is that going to improve? You got about 20 seconds. I, I, truthfully, I think they have hit a size that if they can just end up at the end of the year the same size they were at the beginning of the year, that's probably good for them. I don't, I don't see those major uh, companies replacing themselves with oil and natural gas. They are the ones that I think will move heavily, as they should, into the alternate energy. ATP, on the other hand, will continue to grow. We've got some nice charts on our website. Be in New York at a presentation next week. Hope to have everybody uh, listen in on that one. Al, we got to go. We want to thank you very much uh, for your time. Hope we can talk to you again sometime soon. Very good. Greg, thank you very much. Enjoyed it. There you have it. Al Reese, CFO of ATP Oil and Gas.